This meeting of the Common Council will now come to order. Alderman Jones? Aye. Kobe? Aye. Bowen? Aye. Dowd? Aye. Cox? Aye. Ray? Aye. Donovan? Aye. Lewis? Aye. Murphy? Aye. Borkowski? Aye. Perez? Aye. Zelensky? Aye. Sander? Aye. Mr. President? Aye. 14 ayes. 14 ayes. The meeting report is adopted. My name is Raphael Smith. I'm a community organizer for Citizen Action of Wisconsin. Back in 2016, Milwaukee, along with hundreds of other cities across the country, signed on to the Paris Accords, which called for a reduction in emissions by 45% by 2030 and 100% renewable by 2050. But until today, no steps were put in place or were taken to make it a reality. But with the hard work of the Milwaukee Equity and Climate Alliance, in the leadership of our first two speakers, and with the creation of the task force on climate economic, uh, economic, I mean equity, my, my apologies, we have an opportunity not only to confront our climate crisis, but to use it as an opportunity to address the 40 year economic depression many parts of our city face. With that being said, I would like to bring to the podium and give a huge, huge thank you to Common Council President Ashanti Hamilton. And thank you, Raphael. Well, thank you. Um, see, I, 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 don't, I don't think people get yeah, come on over here. <laughs> see, he used to be on the county board, now he came over here to see <laughs> some big things. Um, and I really want to want to want to thank uh, Supervisor Supreme Moore on Kunde uh, for this willingness to partnership. Um, because I'm today the council just passed this uh, the creation of a a county city task force and this is a partnership in being able to use our leverage and the creation of uh, this unified task force that brings together a coalition of people that are recognizing something that's happening across uh, this country and and that is the huge opportunity the huge opportunity that our response to climate change can produce for communities across this country. And, and a lot of times when we're trying to address issues like this, it's communities, much like the communities that we represent, are oftentimes left out of that process. And so I really want to thank my colleagues that came uh, on board. Many of them have actually come from the county, uh, so there seems to be this, this, this natural uh, kind of relationship uh, that we're trying to build here in creating the platform for uh, communities that have been left out of the process to actually be engaged and to have a coalition that's as diverse as you're about to see today step forward and and mention the importance of making sure that disenfranchised communities are prepared for what's about to happen uh, as we address climate change uh, around the world, but especially in this country, that there is a role for us to play in doing that. And so, being able to identify those opportunities and prepare people for them is like the central focus of this task force. But we're hoping that you actually begin to see the impact of many of the recommendations that are coming, that will come out of this task force, that you will begin to see those as you see the work happening around climate change uh, in this country. And so we want to be on the front end of that. We want to make sure that we have a strong coalition of people that will continue to hold people's feet to the fire so that we see and take advantage of those opportunities. And then we begin to be able to live out this old saying when we say rising tides raise all ships, that we can actually make that happen. Uh, and so being able to stand here with supervisor, uh, with this strong coalition of people who have dedicated themselves to keeping this issue on the front burner um, is something that we're proud of at the city of Milwaukee and we look forward um, to seeing the benefits of in the near future. And so I want to bring up our, our supervisor um, that, that was really leading the charge 
uh, in, in bringing it over to the city of Milwaukee and understanding that this partnership with the city was extremely important. Supervisor Mora. So I'll ask you to forgive my voice. Uh, I'm still trying to get it back. <laughs> However, um, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, President Sean T. Hamilton and the uh, members of the Common Council in the city of Milwaukee. And secondly, I want to ask if there are any climate deniers in the room. <laughs> um, hearing none, um, I think it's very difficult to deny that there's climate change happening um, on this planet. And if you look at, if you experienced the horrible winter we had um, this past January where we were locked in the house for several days, because climate change is not only the planet warming, but it's also the shifting of different regions where, where it makes places colder as well. And um, I, I appreciate uh, the Sierra Club, the 3, 350 Citizen Action of Wisconsin, et cetera, and everyone who is approaching this climate change issue with the fervor that it requires. However, I also appreciate that we're also approaching economic inequity with the same fervor at the same time. And so what we want to do is look at how uh, climate change has affected us. However, how, how has economic inequity uh, faced us in the city as well? And as we're dealing with climate change in the city of Milwaukee, we're also dealing with that economic inequity as well. And many of the people who live in many of the neighborhoods may be saying to themselves, what does climate change have to do with economic inequity? We know that if we're going to be retrofitting rooms, we're going to be redoing windows, we're going to be putting solar panels up, somebody has to do that work. And we want to make sure that those who have been hit hardest through deindustrialization de in our cities and many of the other number of things that have caused the economic inequity also have access to those uh, jobs. Um, just like in the, in the 60s and 70s, the big saying was you could leave one job in the morning and by lunchtime you have another job. Well, we know that the, what the industrialization has done to our city, but we know that there can be a new industrialization through green jobs that actually fix our climate change crisis and also fix the inequities in our city as well. And for those who think that we need to just be focusing on crime and, and different things like that, we also know that having a good job and having economic equity in our city actually is the linchpin to solving many of these other problems and challenges that we have in the city. So I want to thank the Common Council again. Um, it's been passed today, it was passed unanimously, and we picked up some co-sponsors as well, and it will be before the Milwaukee County Board before this month is over. So I want to thank everybody for their partnership, and I will hand it back over to the President of the Common Council if he wants to hand it off to anyone else. Thank you. Oh, Raphael Smith. Yes, sir. <laughs> leadership we have in all of government, but that's not the end of it. We have grassroots leaders, and the next person, the next speaker, is the embodiment of that. She has a love and a care for her community that's unmatched. Not only is she a pastor, she's a community leader. With that, I'd like to bring up Pastor Dana Kelly. I didn't know who she was going to do. Just to stand and be a voice of the people, the common people, although um, I do have a title of pastor before my name, I still have um, the uh, right of being a citizen here in Milwaukee. I have the right of being able to have uh, equal opportunity at jobs and equal opportunity at fair living because our constitution says we the people have an inalienable right for life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And just listening to everyone and even being a part of this process, um, learning more about what this Green New Deal is about and what it stands for, it's more than green in our pockets. And it's even more than equity. I looked up the word equity, it means fairness. Fairness is merely, because we can merely be fair, but equality is what's right. Equality is what's just. And the 100% just campaign stands just for that. It stands for equality for all. It levels the playing field for all involved. And what that does, just as uh, City Councilman uh, uh, 
Supreme just spoke that it, it makes our morality change. It changes the mindset of the people and what they want out of life. It changes how they view their community and what they want their community to look like. And if they are a part, if we are a part of the process, then how much value will we take in the things and the work that we have done? The equal sign is parallel. And if you look at this Green New Deal, it is a parallel to bringing equality to the city of Milwaukee, the number one most segregated state in our united nation. So we have to just look at ourselves first and foremost and, and see, have we been living a just life? Have we been doing what's right? Or have we just merely been fair in the process? So I'm going to leave you, as I have in the past, with Micah 6 and 8. And he says, he has told you, O oh man, what he requires and what the Lord seeks from you. And that is to love justice, to show mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so our last speaker is a representative from the Milwaukee Equity and Climate Alliance. Uh, for over the last year and a half, they have been pinning the hard work of doing and pushing forward this task force. So with that, I'd like to bring up Linda Frank. Hello, everyone. I am Linda Frank. I'm a lawyer and member of 350.org. The Milwaukee chapter is the climate change organization. And uh, as Raphael mentioned, I have been working with the alliance known as the Milwaukee Equity and Climate Alliance um, over the past year and a half, together with uh, not only 350.org, but Sierra Club and um, the Citizen Action of Wisconsin. Um, and um, in discussions with many other stakeholders and organizations who have been joining our effort. Um, we had come together with a purpose of advocating for action on the local level in terms of responding to climate change and tying that in with addressing the economic disparity that was you know, so eloquently described by our, our uh, speakers today. And today, I tell you today, for us is a cause for celebration. It is a culmination of this effort, and we celebrate President Ashanti Hamilton for creating this organization. and bringing it to the Milwaukee Common Council, all the co-sponsors who have signed on to it, and for the unanimous vote of our entire Common Council. And we look forward to action at the County Board of Supervisors, headed up by Supervisor Supreme Moore Mokandi. So we are faced with the dual crises of climate change and economic disparity. And it's, these are issues that not only our nonprofit organizations have recognized and been extremely concerned about, but also people in the Midwest um, suffering droughts and um, all of the um, uh, I'm sorry, in the Midwest we've been suffering flooding more than anything else. <laughs> and uh, across the country, um, the, the droughts and heat waves and um, you know, other impacts of climate change that are being felt and suffered more and more to the point where um, now the majority of the American public recognizes that 
climate change caused by human activity um, is real and is a serious issue that must be addressed. Um, so we are here to welcome the entire community to join in this effort. Um, reach out to the Sierra Club, 350 Milwaukee, and Citizen Action of, of Wisconsin. Join, join our coalition. Keep up with what's happening on our websites and social media. And um, support the action uh, before the, the county board. And then uh, we really need the community to come together in support of the task force and those 13 members who will be putting together recommendations for our greater Milwaukee area. Um, we need all of the expertise and input and concerns of stakeholders um, so that we have a real success and a really strong action uh, carried out as, as we have committed to today in the city of Milwaukee. Thank you. With that, we want to bring it to a close, but before we leave this room, I'd like to just say this is our opportunity to do something big and bold. And we'll walk into hand nice things too. Right? <laughs> yeah. So let's make it happen. If there's any further questions, we are available after the press conference. And thank you for coming out. And let's get to work. Right.